What's going on, y'all? So let's What's going on? I am back. See, I wasn't even sure if I was going to come back and do an individual review or just wait till my what it is. But I just said, you know, let's just go ahead and get it out the way because it's fresh on my mind. So let's discuss. Tonight, right after the Love and Hip Hop, we had VH1 Hip Hop Honors, okay? I must say that each and every year I look forward to this show. Out of all the award shows and specials that come on, the Hip Hop Honors, they give it to me each and every time because it's like taking me back, you know, when they have it. I haven't really been disappointed. Um, This year, they kind of kept it on the hush for a little bit, and then they finally came out and said that it was about the 90s and shit, so I was like, how they gonna do this? And then they start incorporating, like, not just the music, but, you know, actors and, and TV shows that help. Uh, with the hip-hop and put hip-hop as a focal point and get it out there, help the movement go on. So I was like, all right, now this can go a lot of different ways. I thought they was going, they could have, mm. okay, I like the show. I'm going to say that. I like the show. My only problem with the show was the fact that it was only an hour and eight minutes, okay? I cannot remember if in previous seasons or previous years to have the hip-hop honors been over an hour but I feel like because this is the 90s all right we're not just doing certain clips because sometimes with the hip-hop honors you know they do like um the south or they do east coast they do west uh, west coast they do the midwest or whatever or they do certain clicks you know back in the day you had your Rockefellers and then you had your um bad boy you had your uh uh you know your no limits your cash money you know, you have shit like that. They used to break it up like that. But this year, they literally did a fucking decade, okay? The 90s. And I applaud them for doing the 90s because, listen, baby, I was born in 87, okay? I was born at a time where I was able to appreciate all that music that came out back then. Even as an adult today, I am so grateful that I came up in a time period where music was either just breaking through or getting better was the best shit ever, okay? You know, I ain't gonna say the 90s was the best, but for me, it was one of the better decades of music, okay? Because, you know, the 80s was hitting it too, the 70s had some shit too, but we were still making breakthroughs and we was doing the damn thing, okay? And hip-hop and R&B, everybody was coming in and it was like, if you came out during the 90s especially... You guaranteed damn near to have a fucking hit, at least one hit. You know, you at least had a number one somewhere, okay? Somebody remembered this and remembered that. You probably didn't have another one after that, but bitch, you had that one under your belt and it was hidden, okay? So I was really, really looking forward to seeing the hip hop honors. And I was like, how can they do this? Because the time frame was just throwing me the fuck off. Like, this is a big decade. How y'all gonna cram all of this in there? Like, man. You know, if you want to, the hip hop honors with, with the 90s, what comes to mind is a lot of music videos um, that came out. So, of course, they tributed Hype Williams, but it was also different other directors that just wasn't Hype Williams. They could have, you know, did that on, on the, at the same time, too. You also had movies and stuff, um, directors, you know, Spike Lee. He incorporated hip hop in some of his shit. I was waiting for them to put up in their... Um, do the right thing, especially with this political climate. You have Pharrell come out there. He was supposed to introduce Hype William, and before he even did Hype William stuff, he started talking about the stuff that's going on, gave a little political message, which was needed, and I appreciate it. And, um, you know, do the right thing, and then Radio Raheem, that was very much hip-hop like. Um, but, you know, they had time. They had time to put in a few more stuff. If they would have just went on ahead, at least gave them an hour and a half or two hours, okay? Loving hip hop, one shit coming on after um this, okay? They could have went on ahead and gave us another fucking hour and made it till ten o'clock, all right, because they ain't doing nothing but repeating fucking loving hip hop. All right. That's all that's on right about now. All right. And I'm just sitting here like, okay, how they gonna do this? I do feel like they crammed a lot of stuff in there. But they could have put more in there. It could have been a. It could have been longer. It could have been longer because the nineties was the mother. They could have did a. I, I can't remember. Did they do a, t a, t a Teddy Riley session section uh, one time? Because 
that new Jack Swing era at the early 90s, they could have did Heavy D in them, bitch. Heavy D in the fucking boys. Um, you know, all these people that made it. They could have... Oh, it's just a lot that they could have done. Like, early 90s, down. They could have did a fucking timeline. But, um, beggars can't be choosers. I am a little appreciative of what they put out. Um, Missy Elliott started the show. When she did She's a Bitch, She's a Bitch, When She Looks My Way. You know, that motherfucking video, I used to think, Missy don't get the just dope that she deserves. I am so mad. Missy should have been got a video Vanguard award and from the NTV awards. Okay. And if she is not up to get a video Vanguard in 2018, I'm going to test some shit up. Okay. Because it is not fair videos. When I think of videos, bitch, Missy Elliott is one of the people that come to my motherfucking mind because her shit is always out there and on a new level. She's a bitch video was so ahead of its time. All right. I said, what the fuck? I mean, Missy already came out and gave you garbage bag teas, okay, with um, I Can't Stand the Rain, all right? You know, and then she comes back with, ooh, I suck it to me like you want to, ooh, you know, and then beat me now I want. She was the darling, beat me now I want, bitch. She was the shit. Then she's a bitch on uh, So Addictive uh, CD. Come on now. And she was bald-headed, big black bald-headed woman just doing her goddamn thing. And she lost all that fucking weight. She came out, put that bald shit on, you know. And she was hitting her moves kind of stiff. But you know, Missy ain't a dancer like that no more. You know, but see, that's the thing. Missy used to dance back in the day. That bitch used to be floating. I said, bitch, if you can do it, I can do it too. All right? I ain't going to attempt it, but bitch, I'm going to try. All right? But no, I'm not. Let me see stop okay my knee is bad but um she was doing it first the song come on then she sped it up to a little light it almost felt like because i was like are they up there footworking is that chicago footwork up there so you know a bitch got hype a little bit then they slowed it down a little bit then they put her little cape on that was spread across the floor then she came back took that bitch off and said no bitch i ain't done okay then and when they was finished she said bitch i'm finna lay here and you finna look at me for a couple of seconds and that's exactly what the fuck we did i said you better fucking do that regina hall was the host she was cute for what it is i like the little um costume changes that she was doing that was so in the 90s when she first came out there she was giving us poetic justice tees okay minus the braids but just the hair you know and the hat and the shirt and the pants you know it was really nice i like how she was keeping up with the theme um uh every time i hear regina hall speak I swear, I feel as though she is about to go into Brenda from Scary Movie. That what uh, I, I picture every time. I know I'm not the only one. Then, you know, Master P and um, Jermaine Dupri, they were getting nominated. Not nominated, but, you know, honored. Um, they gave their little speech or whatever. Before they gave their speech, uh, Trick Daddy and Trina came out there and said, You know that? Uh-uh, done been the places I've been. Who done the shit that I done? You know, y'all know the fucking song, bitch. If you grew up, I don't give a fuck where you from, where you at, or how old you are. Especially if you from the 90s, bitch, and you did not know the whole verse, Tricks verse. If you, okay, fuck Tricks verse. I give you a pass if you didn't know trick verse. But if you didn't know Trina's verse on you, um, you know, man, bitch, I can't fuck with you. I can't fuck with you. At least that do bad five or six best friend that you don't know. Uh-uh. But come on now. If you don't know none of that shit, bitch, I can't really fuck with you like that. Because we're not on the same level. All right? Y'all on this new shit. I'm on this real shit. Okay? Then, um, Romeo came out there. And then, um, you know, I got the hook up. And then, Shilk the Shocker brought his ass out there. Make him say, uh... Na 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 na. I was like, bitch. It was no limit down in the south, especially in the uh, in Louisiana's New Orleans. All right, you had no limit, and you had cash money, and hot boy. Oh my god, bitch. They should have did a fucking montage of Missy Elliott shit, cause then they could have did hot boys, baby. You got what I want. See, I be driving Lexus Jeeps and the Ben Jeeps and the Lincoln Jeeps. You know, you know, I can give it to you, but I ain't gonna really do all that tonight. Not tonight. But, um, it's just exciting to see all this shit. I'm like, y'all are taking me back and I am loving it. I am loving it. And, bitch, you making me feel old as shit. 
but bitch, it was fucking hitting. But um, you know, they did that, and then Escape come out. <clears throat> Y'all know, I love Escape. I do. I've never been a fan of Candy's voice. Candy came out there. Every man is... I said, girl, you below that note. A little bit too low. But she sounded better than she did on the BET Awards. So I'm not going to go in. And I was waiting for them. I just knew the Latasha was going to come out there and do her thing. And of course, she gave us some vocal runs at the end. All right. That was cute. Like I said, Jermaine and, you know, Master P came up there, gave their little speech or whatever. When he goes on commercial, it comes back and we see Tiana Taylor on the stage. And it's like this montage, you know, mix of a whole bunch of different 90 cuts. And she was just giving you all the type of dances that was going on, giving you all type of choreography. Now, I seen her doing a rehearsal on her Snapchat, and she had that same blonde wig on, and I was thinking like, damn, bitch, she finna come out here and do Lil' Kim again, because y'all know she killed that shit when she did it last year, okay, but I'm glad she did what she did, it was cute, and come to find out, she killed that set and had a broken foot, I said, I didn't even notice the fucking cast on her leg, I didn't know, but bitch, she still did that shit, good job, Tiana Taylor, bring her back each year, because she gonna fuck it up each year, and I'm gonna be here for it, um, I do like the fact that, like, bitch, y'all could have brought In Living Color back together and did that. Because they always brought, I'm not, you. they did Martin, okay? Tashina Arnold came out there and she gave a little speech and they was talking about Martin. They did a little, um, you know, video package for him and showing how, you know, he had different artists on there. And he was a hip-hop show uh, infused. It was, it was really nice, okay? Everybody fucking knows Martin. Um, if you don't even like Martin, you know something about Martin, okay? BET, Centric, and just about every other channel play Martin all the goddamn time, okay? You done probably seen all episodes multiple times, all right? Um, and the many characters that he played on there, and, you know, you had, what is his name? Oh, my God, I can't remember his name, but the light-skinned tall dude came out there, um, being Dragonfly Jones. Then the other dude come out there being Otis. Old man security guard. Okay, then to uh um uh, Regina Hall came out there being um Roscoe, snot nose ass Roscoe, okay? That was real nice. And then you know Martin come up there, he was talking, Martin mm, was wrong with your voice, boo. But I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna do that. We having a nice night. We having a nice night. We're not gonna be critical like that. I ain't gonna be petty. That small leave that shit alone. That man has done a lot. He can afford to talk like that. So you do what you do, bitch. Okay. And he did that shit. You know, um, I will never forget that episode. And they played that episode, a clip when Biggie came on there. And that was a classic ass episode of Martin when Tashina Arnold and Tisha Campbell was going at it. Anita Faker, what it was it? Anita Faker and uh, Phony Braxton. Bitch, and they was trying to say something well over the rainbow. That shit was fucking hilarious, okay? I was just mad that to Tisha. I said, damn, Tisha, where you at? You could have came out there and popped up somewhere. And I am, t or saying, I am still here. I'm still here, here. But anyway, whatever. You know, it was cute for what it was. Um, I really wish they would have did like a living single, um, like threw that in there too. They could have threw that in there, talked about a living single because a living single gave a lot of artists in the nineties, especially platform to premiere and to get their music out there. Rap stars, R and B stars, but a lot of hip hop stars came out there and they were performing and stuff, you know, um, on their show. I fucking love it. Plus you had the fly girls. I mean, they mentioned it a little bit and mentioned all the people that came from that show or whatever, but it would have been nice had they mentioned it a little bit more like they did Martin or whatever, but whatever. Um, it was cute. I guess the dancers that they had out there because after each commercial break or before commercial break, they had these group of girls come out there and they was dancing and, you know, had different clothes on and whatever. And so I, they was giving me fly girl tees. Okay. So I guess that was their little homage to one living color. So, I mean, I give it, they could have did lemon single too a little bit, but you know, they only had an hour and fucking eight minutes, bitch. And then they hyped it up because Mariah Carey was supposed to be on there and I knew they was going to save her to the last. Okay. So I was like, I wasn't even uh, sweating it. I was just nervous a little bit when they kept on bringing her up and I was just saying I hope Mariah Carey is in full voice on pitch 
the right key, notes, and everything. And she's ready to do this shit. We'll get to that in a second. But, um, Ty Dolla Sign came out there. I'm going to be quite honest. They gave Ty Dolla Sign the right song for his voice. This is how we do it, bitch. Montel Jordan must be still getting paid off of that. Because I hear that shit everywhere. And it's been in a lot of commercials. Na, 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 na. You know, it's, you know, I'm not going to give y'all that much, okay? But, uh, no, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop with y'all. I'm giving y'all all the ad libs and shit. This is how we do it. It's Friday night. And I feel alright. Them parties here on the west side. Okay, let me stop. Let me stop. Stop. Montel Jordan had some cuts. Bitch. He did. And he's still a pastor now. You know, God got him. That's good. That's great. You know, best thing to do, go with God. But, um, he did that. And they got the right song for his voice. Because, to be quite honest, I feel as though... Ty Dolla Sign, I don't know if it's just me. Sometimes I'd be like, is he a rapper? Is he a singer? He can't sing to me. I'm be honest. You know, I may be in the minority, but he just can't sing to me. I mean, he got some cute little songs. He he gets the songs that fit his voice, but he can't sing to me. Then um, Candy and motherfucking Tiny come out on the fucking stoop, bitch, okay? They come out there dressed in the no scrub and the black outfit that they had in the no scrub TLC hat in the no scrub video. And I said, Bitch, y'all don't understand what is going on right now, okay? You don't understand what is going on right now. Not only are they paying homage to TLC and this No Scrub video, they are paying homage to themselves. You want to know why? Because it was Candy and Tiny who wrote that hit, okay? It was them who made that shit possible, all right? And they are still getting paid off of that shit. Ed Sheeran, The Shape of You, bitch, they said he sampled that shit, and he, they getting paid from that too. Like, girl, they better fucking pay homage to their damn selves, and they sounded fucking good. Candy sounded better on that one. I had to give it to her, and she looked good, okay? People be like, I didn't know Tiny could sing. Tiny could sing. Okay, y'all need to wake the fuck up. The bitch can sing, all right? And when she get from underneath T.I. Scrotum, you know she can do a whole bunch of shit, okay? It is real nice. You know, I was like, y'all did that shit, okay? And then Warren G came out there, the regulate. I said, oh, R.I.P. Nate Dog. you know, that was real nice. They had Ty Dolla Sign singing the hook again, but okay, it was cute. And then Fat Joe and Remy Ma and all... I don't want to be a player no more. I'm not a player. I just crush a lot. R.I.P. Big Pun. I said it wouldn't be right for anybody else but Fat Joe and Remy Ma to do a tribute to Fat Joe. I mean, to Big Pun, okay? They was friends. I think Pun was one of the people that helped found Remy. And they was cool or whatever before he passed away. So, you know, that was a fitting tribute. I liked it. Um, like I said, for real, came out there, gave his little speech, introduced Hype Williams. Hype was that bitch. I mean, he was that nigga. I'm not going to call him a bitch. He was that nigga back in the day. And he still is. That did videos, okay? He done moved on to movies and stuff. But he was that motherfucker that everybody got to do their videos. And his videos popped, okay, in the fucking 90s. They were the shit. You could not tell... Once you saw a video, you knew it was a Hype, uh, a Hype Williams video, okay? You just knew it, all right? And when he came out there to give his speech, he just said thank you to, I think, his wife and said peace. I said, well, you keep it sweet and cute and you just left. Thank you, because you knew we was on time restraint, all right? Um, Then Havoc, Lil' Kim, Fab came out there to do a quiet storm. This is real, you know. Um, <laughs> Lil' Kim did good. Lil' Kim did good. Was it the last VH1's hip-hop artist that she forgot the words of her stuff? We're gonna let that slide. You know, she was sound like a little out of breath a little bit, like she not really used to her hips, okay? But, you know, she did a good job, and I was here for it, all right? And at the end of the episode, we had DJ Khaled come out to introduce Mariah Carey. One of these days, and I do not wish this upon this man, because I actually like DJ Khaled, but... 
one of these days, um, Wild Thoughts is going to come on, and that Carlos Santana sample is going to come on, and he's going to be doing that fake-ass cha-cha-cha salsa that he be doing, and he's going to trip on his own feet, and he's going to fall flat forward, okay? I'm just telling y'all, and I know y'all been thinking the same thing, too. So don't come at me, because y'all was thinking it, and I just put it out there. But, um, Lil Aside is there. Monica was holding him. Bitch, Monica is everybody's friend, okay? Monica and Kelly fucking Rowland. We got to give an honorable mention to them, too. Especially Monica, because Monica was looking good, okay? And Kelly was looking good. Chocolatey goodiness, okay? It was like a caramel chocolate swirl going on right about there. And I was like, you know what? And they friends in real life, because Monica is friends with every fucking body. So, and I was seeing them all on Snapchat, too. I was like, y'all do that shit. Y'all do that shit. I said, so, Monica, you playing babysitter to little side? All right, the hardest working baby in show business? Come through. Okay. And, of course, you know, DJ Khaled um, introduces Mariah Carey. And the whole time, and I'm not even trying to be funny, like I said, they do a little montage about Mariah and how, you know, Mariah is that bitch. Okay? And I'm going to preface this first and for the fuck most. Mariah Carey is an icon. Mariah Carey is a fucking legend. She's one of my favorite singers, okay? And I'm a fan of hers. I have always been a fan of her. Got every fucking, even if I didn't like it as much, I still got every fucking album that she's put out, all right? And I can still talk shit if I want to because of that. And I don't give a fuck what nobody say, all right? Mariah Carey has been that bitch and is that bitch. And she has always mingled and dabbled with the hip-hop side and niggas. All the fucking time, okay? When Mariah Carey first came out, you ain't know if the bitch was black, white, biracial, bitch. What are you, okay? And then when she opened up her goddamn mouth and she put these songs out, it didn't even fucking matter, okay? Mariah could do hip-hop. Mariah can do R&B. She can do pop, bitch. The bitch did music, okay? And it was all the fuck right with us, all right? And, um, you know, they did her little shit, okay? Mariah comes out. We hear the honey beat. Now, what we gonna do right here, we gonna spool it out. Mm, mm. I was like, all right, boom, boom, boom. Where's Mariah Carey? Mariah Carey finally pops up because I see all her dancers and shit. And then I was like, okay, Mariah comes out in a little black uh, cat suit. And she was giving the tease like she was in the video. And then she pulled it down a little bit. I said, okay. Now, she's coming out a little stiff. And I was like, all right. Maybe, you know, she's trying to get her footing. Okay. And um, it's going to loosen up a little bit. Never really did that. Okay. Mariah came out there and she just stood there for a second. And she starts singing. Wasn't the best, but it wasn't the worst. And I was fine with it. I was, I can't even, you know, at this point, you get what you get with Mariah Carey. And no matter what you say, you're just going to get what you get. And she's going to do what she do. And um, we didn't heard all the criticisms. We didn't heard all the accolades. We didn't heard all of the criticisms, the praise, and all that shit. Um, but, um, yeah. Um, I'm not going to sit here and act like I expected more of her, but I really wish that, you know, because this is like a fun event and I'm not expecting her to try to hit the moves that she did in the video. We know Mariah ain't a dancer or nothing like that. I just didn't want her to be up there being so goddamn stiff the way that she was. It was like she was stuck. Okay. And she was just not giving me everything. And I just wanted to, at one point, at one fucking point, you know, the locks came out there. They did their thing and all that shit. And she disappears and she goes sit down. I said, it really was the backup dancers and um, the lock show because they the ones that was giving you all the energy. All right. And I was just sitting there looking at Mariah in the little helicopter or whatever. And I was just like. I really want it. And then, of course, they do that little dip shit that she do when she performs this song all the time. I enjoyed it, but I just wanted more. But then again, it's Mariah, so you get what you get. And I just suspect, like, girl, I wanted at least a shimmy shake. Like, give me a little shoulder bob. Like, she couldn't even do this. She couldn't do that. She couldn't do this. She couldn't do that. She couldn't just, ah, ah, because it's like, honey, when you love, when you love. 
I said, bitch, give me some of that. Give me some of this. You can't do it. You can't do it, bitch. I can do it. She said, no, not tonight. And I said, okay. Okay. It's all right. I'm going to let that go. I'm going to let that go. I mean, it's late. You got to get back to your kids. You know, you probably ain't eight, you know. So, probably still a little lightheaded. So, I'm just let that go. What can you fucking expect? And that was the end of the show. Um, I will say, next time, VH1, y'all get the correct audience to come out there. Because that audience, they didn't appreciate the music, okay? They didn't appreciate that. Them motherfuckers that was in the audience looked like they was born in 1999, all right? Or 95. They didn't know. They didn't know, all right? So, yeah, the hip hop honors. You guys tell me what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. Do you agree with some of the stuff that I was saying? And um, how would you have done it? Who do you think got left out and deserves a fucking tribute? Okay, um, y'all tell me, and I'll see y'all later. <laughs>